What is going on my dudes one step here with the Mortal Kombat 1 full story recap including all the characters endings. Liu Kang is now the keeper of time beating Kronika in the events from Mortal Kombat 11 and then he creates his new era. An era of so called peace. In this new era you'll see and recognize all sorts of names and faces but you'll notice a few roles have been switched around for the sake of that piece. As you can see we start off with Shang Tsung who is now a merchant that is selling fake goods. He then gets called out for being a fraud and is cast out. He's alone pondering his life's mistakes at a sick RV and is approached by, oh my gosh, is that Kronika? She promises kingship as long as he follows her and does as she says. We then get the creepiest Shang Tsung smile you've ever seen. Raiden and Kung Lao are now simple farmers and they decide to take a quick break at the village tavern where they are served by the sweet grandma, Madame Bo. Then the Lin Kuei approach Madame Bo asking her for answers. So she's a tough cookie and does not give up. She decides to throw punches. Smoke goes absolutely a hits her in the face and throws her down a whole story. Finally, Raiden and Kung Lo step up and take them all down. Sub-Zero and Scorpion both show up, but there's still no match for the Shaolin monks. At the end of the tussle, we find out that the new fire god Liu Kang was behind this charade of a fight as a test to Kung Lao and Raiden, also learning that Liu Kang set Madame Bolt to train the boys from their growing up, they are now worthy of being champions. Liu Kang goes to gather other champions and here we meet the infamous Johnny Cage first set on a movie, breaking up with his girlfriend who's not Sonya Blade, kind of weird, I know. And then non-blind Kenshi walks in and says, yo, give me my sword back, dude. Johnny says, no, it's mine. They fight, Cage wins. During his gloating, Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion all show up. He's like, yo, I'm fire god Liu Kang and y'all are now champions, come with me. After months of training it's finally time to choose an earth realm champion classic king of the hill style and after multiple fights raiden is crowned as champion hilarious as raiden is champion Liu kang is protector now Liu kang pulled the old switcheroo on them all raiden is giving the amulet that grants him lightning and thunder powers as he's no longer thunder god but rather thunder guy now we're taken to outworld's capital sun do where the tournament will be held under empress sindel and her daughters melina and katana who are now friendly siblings on the way to meet sindel we run into lee may who is first constable she's rounding up those who have Tarkat, which is actually the disease in this timeline and those affected are like Baraka. Melina isn't very fond of Lee Mei and we learn that Melina's dad, King Jared, was actually assassinated on Lee Mei's watch, so Melina holds her responsible. We meet General Shao who talks smack about winning the tournament, and then Mommy Sindel, I mean Empress Sindel shows up. Introductions are made and the tournament just basically starts right there and now. First up is Lee Mei. Holy cow, it's already over, raiding kicks her trash. Without missing a beat, the next fight is already happening and it's Reiko up next, who also just gets wrecked by Thunder Guy Raiden. Finally, we get a small break for an evening banquet where we see some familiar faces. Shao gets drunk and Sindel basically says, shut up, man, you're ruining the night. Go away. Shao wants to basically gain independence from Liu Kang and says that the sorcerer's prophecy is coming true and that the prophecy states that Liu Kang will basically take over Outworld and Sindel's like, yo, chill, man. We'll act if we see signs, but not until then. You need to relax. Melina and Katana show up and oh yeah, by the way, Melina has Tarkot, which is the disease said earlier, and at the pub Public found out she'd be banished to the way, so Katana has to take her place in this tournament so that way Melina's symptoms don't act up and expose her. The tournament continues, and sure enough, Katana is up next, gets wrecked. And then finally, up next, we have the grand finale fight where Raiden fights Shao Kahn, or should I say General Shao, a warrior who has fought in countless wars and countless battles, gets wrecked by some village dude with lightning powers. Like, yeah, okay, he's pissed. And that's uh that's it. That's Mortal Kombat. That's the uh that's the whole tournament. The Earth Realm was just say, cool, good job, and they basically just prepped to go home. Liu Kang is actually visited by Garrus, the new Keeper of Time position he volunteered for after Liu Kang didn't want to do it no more. Garrus warns that the meaningless life of Shang Tsung that Liu Kang crafted for him has been compromised, and Shang Tsung is on his way to becoming a powerful sorcerer again. A little bit worried, Liu Kang says, all right, I'll keep an eye out, you go back to the hourglass. Liu Kang sends Kenshi, Johnny Cage, and Kung Lao on a mission to find Shang Tsung. They actually find Shang Tsung at a Tarkatan camp, taking bone marrow from the Tarkots, especially Baraka here. Frenzy breaks out and the trio go to capture Shang but are stopped by Baraka and the Tarkatans. Shang here unfortunately escapes. Then they have to fight Baraka to convince them they're on the same side. They do actually convince Baraka that they're on the same side and then Baraka goes, hey, if you want to find Shang soon, let's just go to his laboratory. It's just down the road. They find the laboratory. They go check it out. Baraka just kind of stands watch outside. At the lab, they find Shang Tsung infecting Melina with Tarkot, though they don't know he's actually trying to keep her stable slash cure her. Alongside Shang Tsung, the 
is Rain and Tanya. They try to stop them all, and again, the fighting commences. Rain and Tanya lose, but they see Melina start to freak out and wake up a little bit. So Kenshi goes to check on her. She's starting to go Brock, and she's starting to go a on all of them. Everything seems to be okay, but Melina goes absolutely crazy. And oh my gosh, she stabs his eyes out. Okay, so that's how it goes blind in this timeline. Shang shows up at the last second to calm her down. He puts her to sleep right when the other shows up. As they show up, Shang frames them. And then, oh my gosh, who is this? It's Tan Skin Quan Chi. Oh, so this is the sorcerer who has a prophecy. Not even Shang Tsung knows why Liu Kang is after him, but he must find out. And then Quan Chi mentions that killing the Earth Realmers will cause more tension between the realms and that their benefactor will be pleased. As the team is in prison in Shang Tsung's dungeons, their guard and or Shang Tsung's slave reptile shows up. He reveals that Shang Tsung has his family and will kill them if he doesn't do what he says. He also shows he's a Terran and only can be shapeshifted between his reptilian form and his human form. Oh, there's Shang Tsung, gonna do experiments on them. But then he says, psych, I gotta go, I got other crap to do. Reptile lets the other captive Tarkatans go and loose and they fight to keep themselves alive. Reptile says, no, you can't leave he'll kill my family i have to stop you shang shows up and i was like yo what the f is this oh and by the way reptile i already killed your family they break out leave and run into ashra demon turned angel who's working on herself as a person we learn here that quan chi is her former master and she reveals that quan chi wants dominion over the realm and after her escape quan chi wants her dead of course and also showcases that quan chi is building devices that steal souls on a mass scale as some sort of weapon and he's testing one of those right here in the living forest to be honest that's a great place to test that kind of weapon as many souls of the dead reside in the forest. She also says that he's working with Shang Tsung and the team goes, what? Because Quan Chi can lead them to Shang Tsung, they start the hunt together. They find him operating a soul stealing machine with a few teammates, including Havoc, Natara, and Serena. And of course, they got to attempt to stop him. Johnny Cage and Kenshi have a cute bro moment where Johnny gives Kenshi Sento. In a turn of events, Quan Chi activates the soul stealer and steals souls from the living forest and creates, oh my gosh, who is that? Yep, you guessed it, that's Ermac. Ashra fights and defeats both Havoc and Quan Chi, but Ermac is like, nah, fam. Kenshi reunites with Sento, they become one and Kenshi's back to the blind ninja we all know and love. Ashra and Kenshi defeat Ermac, Ashra then goes and shuts down the soul stealer, and in doing so, the souls attack Quan Chi and take part of his soul, I'm guessing? Thus turning him back to the white skin Quan Chi we know. And there we go, the team now has captured Quan Chi. Shang Tsung is visited by Kronika and reports that all good things, all good things, nothing to worry about here, we're doing good. In an attempt to get back home using the portal, they must must go through Sun Do, but what a coincidence. A festival is going on in Sun Do, making the escape a bit harder than expected. We also see a small secret romance with Melina and Tanya, and Katana's like, stop being so obvious. And Melina's like, this is ridiculous. The team puts Quan Chi to sleep and disguise themselves, and Reptile will create a diversion so that way they can escape. Unfortunately, Sizoth or Reptile is spotted and apprehended, so he fights off Li Mei and even the Princess Katana. The team is spotted by Xiao, but don't worry, they fight their way out. They use the portal here, and they are sent back to earth realm Liu Kang greets them and is like holy Tenshi, your eyes. Johnny introduces Ashra and Sizoth and welcomes them to the team. The Avengers are now assembling. Liu Kang meets with Garrus again to discuss the events that are unfolding and is like, how the hell is this happening? I gave Shang Tsung and Quan Chi meaningless lives. They shouldn't be sorcerers. Garrus reveals that someone has interfered with this timeline and shows both sorcerers being visited by some female. They bring up Kronika, but know that she was wiped from all timelines and there's no way it can be her because Titans once killed can no longer be revived. The three living Quay brothers are having a small argument because Sub-Zero is being kind of a dick and Scorpion for some reason is the reasonable one here which is kind of weird to see. Liu Kang sends Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and Smoke to Ying Fortress to destroy the Soul Stealers and then sends Raiden and Kung Lao to Wuxi Academy to be prepared for war and Sub-Zero is still a dick. Their invasion of Ying Fortress is interrupted by Natara and Ermac but no worries they are no match for the power of family. They sneak into Ying Fortress and actually defeat Quan Chi and Shang Tsung but yay! Gen General Xiao is here to save the day. Garrus is just trying to figure out who the hell this chick is. Shang Tsung and Xiao persuade Sub-Zero to come to the dark side. They have a growing army, the dragon army actually, and Sub-Zero has promised freedom from Liu Kang and power. Sub-Zero reveals he let their father die so 
though he's always been kind of a dick. Scorpion pulls the most badassness we've seen thus far and completely obliterates the guards and everyone here and then he escapes. On his way out, he runs into Rain, Quan Chi, and Havoc. They almost burn his face off, but instead, Havoc's face is actually burned off. And there is the gross face of Havoc that we all know. Scorpion and Smoke go to escape. Well, almost, because Bihan or Sub-Zero catches them right then and there. He's like, where do you guys think you're going? Scorpion kicks his trash, but as the good brothers they are, they take Bihan's body with them. Geras meets back up with Liu Kang and reveals his discovery. There is a second timeline that exists concurrently with theirs. Two separate timelines. So Liu Kang must go to Sindel and tell her everything and convince her to withdraw from Earthrealm. On his journey there, Li Mei is like, listen, I can't let you through. Just kidding, you convinced me, let's go. On the way to Sindel, they are inconveniently interrupted by Reiko, Mataro, and even Tanya. No worries though, Lee Mei can actually win some fights. They finally reach Sindel and are ready to tell their story, but first Lee Mei must defeat Katana and Melina because they interrupt. Finally, Liu Kang is able to tell Sindel about Shang Tsung and how the general has been conspiring behind her back. They head to Shang Tsung's laboratory to really convince Sindel and to prove that Liu Kang is not lying. Liu Kang then lets all the beans spill. He tells them that he's basically God, or at least he was, that he was a Titan the creator of time and the realms themselves. He explains they actually had different lives in the timeline before to us mortals. We might know that timeline as Mortal Kombat 11. They explain that Shang Tsung, Quan Chi, and Xiao have all been groomed to fit their previous roles by some unknown outside entity, and that's why they are becoming their old villain selves. Whoa, Xiao shows up again. Sindel is pissed, don't worry. But Xiao is like, look at my new toy. Then more fighting commences and Sindel kicks some ass. Rain shows up and and shows his true colors as well. Finally, Sindel puts Xiao in his place. They team up with the Lin Kuei boys and now the whole team has been assembled. The Avengers go to infiltrate Ying Fortress to stop the Deadly Alliance and their plans. Lena and Tanya are stopped by Ermac, which wouldn't stand out as crazy for the fight, except that after the fight, Ermac starts to groan and speak and oh my gosh, whose voice is that? Oh my gosh, it's daddy. With the small knockout that Melina gave Ermac, King Jared was basically able to take over over, so no longer Ermac, but King Jermac? King Jared is reunited and is now part of the Avengers. I mean, the team sneaks into the main Dragon Army holdout and sees Shang Tsung. Is basically Kung Fu training the Stone Army. Melina offers to distract them while they get into position and I guess they just let her? Like, yeah, go for it. She pulls it off and they get the surprise attack. Melina fights and beats Shang Tsung and Quan Chi like, yeah, okay. Veronica appears. Oh my gosh, I'm kidding. It's actually Shang Tsung? Okay, pause. So you know how MK11 had two different endings, one where Liu Kang wins over Kronika and then one where Shang Tsung wins. Yeah, well, both of those are basically true in canon because both of them become Titans over their own hourglasses, over their own timelines. Titan Shang Tsung found out there were multiple timelines first, decided to infiltrate Liu Kang's timeline by charading as Kronika and building the lower Shang Tsung up and Quan Chi as sorcerers in order to attempt to throw out Liu Kang and his timeline, basically destroy all who are in it and then merge them into his own timeline. Pulling the good old switcheroo on him. Titan Shang Tsung activates the dragon army and then makes a dramatic exit and then dark raiden and dark sindel basically just wreck everyone which okay yeah totally a screaming girl defeats a demigod two sorcerers and a multiple warriors right okay dark sindel kills normal sindel but as she dies king jared takes in her soul into himself so that way both of their souls can reside together inside of ermac feel bad they only got like 20 minutes to get after jared actually got back the team retreats to handle the battle above and the approaching dragon army they conclude that titan Shang Tsung will need multiple portals to move such an army. And then normal Shang Tsung comes up with a very interesting thought. There are two timelines, so why can't there be more? There must be, right? But how can they be sure? Gears can't check because he is only the steward of the hourglass. Only the keeper of time can do that. And as Liu Kang gave that power up, they're out of options. Psych, Garrus actually kept that power basically in a jar for eons, just in case they might ever need it. I know, how convenient. However, if Liu Kang uses it, he won't be able to come back to be the protector of earth realm it would be a permanent change but of course he decides to do it anyways so now they decide to team up and take out Tain shang tsung and the dragon army they go to retrieve the keeper of time power to give it back to Liu kang at the fire temple the team goes to shut down the gateway so that the army can't have access to the portals the deadly alliance combo go with raiden run into many dark doubles and work to shut down the gateways surprise they run into dark shao because shao always shows up they kick ass and they shut down the 
the gateways. Liu Kang becomes the keeper of time again and searches for other titans in other timelines to team up with. And oh my gosh, is that Titan Katana? Funny enough, it's actually the same Katana from MK11 who fought alongside Liu Kang in that timeline, who also beat Kronika in her timeline. So basically a timeline exists for every character possible and the keeper of time over their own hourglass. They figure out they are the same lovers that were in the timelines prior and they get that sweet kiss finally. They then gather even more Titans, Titan Raiden, Titan Kung Lao and more. Oh my gosh, is that shout interrupting again? Oh no, don't worry, it's only Titan Shang Tsung. Here of course to destroy the timeline and the hourglass. Okay, Big Fight and Shang Tsung attempts to destroy the hourglass during this fight using it as a distraction. Liu Kang of course prevails and stops the destruction of the hourglass and Titan Shang Tsung's quick attempt to do it and then they just let him walk away. I mean, yeah, easy dub, but yeah, let him walk away. Who cares? Don't stop him now. They go to gather more allies across all timelines in order to stop Armageddon. Get it? Because, you know, Mortal Kombat Armageddon previously. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of funny characters, a lot of different timelines, and you get to select your warrior who actually is the winner of this fight. So many characters, so many titans. Big dramatic entrance of Titan Shang Tsung's army, and holy sh**. Is it cool? Not only do we get dark characters, but also characters that are mixed as well, like two characters in one. And thus the war begins. Armageddon has happened. It has started. It's bloody, it's gory, it's dark, but the champion you chose prevails and fights their way to the top to stop Titan Shang Tsung. Along the way, you encounter crazy characters like Li Mei, Scorpion, Shao Sub-Zero, Cyber Smoke, Sonya's Kano, Scorpion Liu Kang, Scorpion Lao, and so many more. You even run into the combat kids? Takeda, Cassie, Kung Jin, and Jackie. But the excitement doesn't last long as Katana freaking kills them all with no sweat. It's a wild and psychotic fight up the pyramid where you finally reach the top and have the most epic battle of all time. The battle against Titan Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, the deadly alliance. You win, of course, and the new Titan Liu King destroys the time essence of the pair. With Titan Shang Tsung destroyed, the timeline he created is also falling apart, so Liu King sends you back to your own timeline. The original squad is back and having a well-deserved break. Liu Kang is kicking in, but as Keeper of Time, life is busy. So he's got to head out and aid the new protectors of Earthrealm, the Shirai Ryu. As the big threat has now been stopped, we can all go back to living our lovely normal lives. But there's actually an after credit scene. We're back to the pyramid to a dying Jax. I guess no matter what timeline he's in, man, the arms are just a no-go. Titan Havoc missed the big battle. He relishes in the aftermath of Armageddon and says that next time it won't be over so quickly. But what happened to all the characters? How did their stories end? Well, Liu Kang really couldn't handle the process of becoming Keeper of Time, so he had to give the position up to somebody else. And who is that someone? It's Geras, of course. Tani becomes the leader of the new reformed Umgadi. Sub-Zero and Sector basically start the cyber initiative to build an army that'll go undetected by Liu Kang. Smoke takes in a young, reckless boy as a new recruit, and turns out it was Hanzo Hisashi. Sindel lives within Jared and they both fight within Ermac to take control. Shang Tsung tries to escape by a boat but almost dies by a storm in the ocean and then somehow is just suddenly teleported to an island where he finds a well that has an endless amount of souls? Of course, because why would that not happen? Scorpion starts a new clan and names after his lover, the Shirai Rai Yu. Reptile goes back home and is welcomed but also finds that many Zaterans actually have this mutation but those that have it are killed by their government to keep it from spreading so Scythos is gonna be fixing that. Rain teams up with Havoc and completely destroys Sido's government, giving in to the chaos and anarchy. But then he has a massive change of heart, basically turns himself in and tries to right his wrongs. Reiko and Shao are raising a new army but cannot seem to get good recruits, so they decide to unlock their secret weapon, Onaga, the Dragon King, and it's up to Reiko to tame him. I guess that's possible. Raiden thinks the anger can actually be used for good in a battle and asks somebody to help him master it. There's no better teacher than Scorpion. Scorpion, of course, so Raiden's basically just taking anger management classes. Natara starts to capture enough beings and or humans and uses them to breed them in order to feed her starving people. Melina decides to see Baraka and agrees to visit his colony and see how bad those with Tarkat can live. She decides to fix and help them live a little bit better and continues to lead the empire. Li Mei tries politics, but she can't handle it, so she just goes back to taking care of the streets. Kung Lao trains Shijinko, but fails to teach him humility, so Shijinko gets 
cocky and has to be stopped by a Raiden and others. So now they have to restart training him and Raiden will teach him how to be humble. Katana has a hard time leading the armies because the armies don't really believe that she could lead. But after a battle that really puts a stump into Shao's plans, she gains their trust. Can she meets up with Jax and they start the Outworld Investigation Agency, otherwise known as the OIA? Johnny creates movies to slowly get the public used to the idea of other realms, gods, and monsters, and more. Garrus is basically chilling forever as protector of the timelines. Shao is working on building an army to take out World's Throne, but as we know, it's not going so well. Baraka is helping Melina with the Tarkatan people and helping them live a better life and in better conditions. Ashra is now a Shaolin monk, but also she misses her shadow sister, Serena. She goes and saves her, and then now they fight side by side, thus creating the Order of Light. Havoc, as we know, teams up with Ren to take out Saito's government, and it just pleases him. And that is all is what's happening with all the characters. Make sure and subscribe here for more Mortal Kombat content, and take it one step at a time.